Hello, welcome back to the Matizzi Museum. I'm Alex DeSelms, the Director of Collections. Last fall, we had a series on how to care for your family heirlooms. Um, we also had some weather difficulties that made attendance um, kind of sporadic, so we thought we'd do some short videos on collections care. I thought we'd start off with paper tips. And don't worry, this is a process. We're still working on this too. It's a little bit involved, so. It, it, it is a process and it does take time. So something you'll wanna keep in mind is all surface areas should be supported and like-sized paper and weight should be stored the same. So don't store something really heavy on top of something that's smaller and lighter. Um, avoid overfilling if you're using either a box or a storage cabinet. Um, to avoid slumpage in file boxes, you'll want to use something called a spacer. And these are just a couple different types. You can also kind of make your own. It just helps keep the extra room in the box spaced so that the files don't slump and distort and all that not fun stuff. We also recommend removing damaging objects such as rubber bands, staples, paper clips. And there are special plastic archival safe paper clips and those are an option if you do need to keep things separated together and don't want to separate them out into different files and folders. Um, also, when possible, carefully and gently unfold and flatten documents to store better. You'll want to use just enough humidity to loosen them and on the National Park Service um, Conservagram site there is a helpful how-to on how to carefully and correctly <laughs> humidify documents so that they can be flattened safely. Um, just be cautious about certain types of papers and um, inks, so be, especially be careful on artwork that has paint and ink that can bleed, and um, if it's not actually paper, such as if it's parchment or vellum, don't do that. <laughs> Consult a conservator. Um, we also recommend acid-free, chemically inert folders and boxes. Here's an example of a um, flip-top document box. And for just regular storage, avoid warm and humid storage conditions and areas with large fluctuations. This can be a garage or an attic. We know sometimes that's not possible, but just make the temperature and humidity as controlled as you can and without too much heat or humidity because that increases your likelihood of getting mold or pests. So if you have um, oversized paper products, such as particularly maps, if possible, it's best to store them in flat files or you can also get really long flat boxes. But um, for us, this is more convenient just because we are gonna have a lot of paper and photos that need to be um, stored like this. So if you're not able to properly flatten and store it so everything is flat and uncreased in either flat file or flat box, rolling is actually better. So these are some examples of maps that have been rolled. So you're going to take acid-free cardboard tubes, roll them in tissue paper, acid-free tissue paper, <laughs> should clarify, and then you can roll the paper object and more tissue in between. Um, if you're doing multiple rolls on the same, you can just do tissue paper in between. Otherwise, you can do them separately. Finish with tissue paper. Tie them with um, cotton ties. That's a really good idea. Cotton is very useful for museum collections. Unfortunately, um, acid-free boxes, tissue paper, etc., are going to be a little more expensive, but they're going to be more cost-effective in the long run just because you won't have to replace them so much. Um, and uh, certain art stores and different museum collection supply stores periodically have sales that those are a good place to wait until there's a sale and do that. If you do have documents like blueprints or even diazo reproductions, works of art with um, a high pH reactive pigment, even some albums and collages, you're going to want unbuffered tissue paper instead of buffered tissue paper. Buffered tissue um, has added calcium carbonate as a buffering agent so that it neutralizes acids and absorbs them and thus extends the life of paper. So those are some of the ways we um, 
safely house and store our paper collection. So thank you for watching. Let us know if you have any questions and we will be back next week.